Hello, welcome to the third installment of 3DS Max Texturing and New Extended Edition. This is Alex, care of Mike Lively's instructional design team at Northern Kentucky University. And as you can see in front of us, I'll catch you up a little bit. We have modeled this house for a client. Now, it gave us this original reference image to this really scary, spooky house. And they want us to make a 3D model that we'll eventually put on a website for them to kind of be an, an attraction or an advertisement for them. All right, so we've modeled it. Everything's done. We got these awesome chimneys. We got this cool window coming up out of the roof. We got a porch, for crying out loud. Now, how do I get a texture onto here that looks realistic that's going to make it look kind of like this over here? Now, to do that, we're going to have to go into Photoshop. And I've been promising this through tutorials. This is the fun part. But there's a little stuff we need to do before we actually get into Photoshop and start messing with the texture. All right, first things first. Go ahead and press 7 on your keyboard. And we get this new little menu up here. This tells us how many polygons are in our shape. Now, 91 is kind of pushing high, especially for online stuff, but a lot of the uh, online programs actually use the processor a lot better. And actually, in the new Flash, you actually enable certain objects to use the graphics processor to render as opposed to just the actual processor on the computer. So that's an aside. But you want to think about polygon economy whenever you're doing something online, or just in general. Now, how the professionals do it in a 3D animation, whether you're at Pixar or if you're making a brand new video game for a PlayStation 3 or Xbox or something, or even the computer, they do something where they take a, a pretty simple polygon like this, and they use bit mapping, which we, will, we won't get into because that's kind of a more advanced thing, but I'm just letting you know for your general knowledge. Uh, bit mapping is kind of a way to take a texture that you make and then manipulate the surface of a polygon to make it look like it has more shape to it, or actually a lot more polys. Instead of having 91, it might look like it has 200 or something, something really detailed. But really, it's all done through the program itself and just through an image. Now, we're not going to do that. We're not going to get into bit mapping, at least in this series of tutorials. But I am going to show you how to put a texture on here. But first, let's then talk about more primitive accommodating. And we're going to bring it down a little bit. Now, when you start doing stuff inside of a browser or rendering it, um, how many times you segment a plane can change the way that the texture actually appears inside the browser on the image? We won't get too much into this, but just be aware of that. It's not a bad idea to have a lot of like lines that segment large planes. Like We could actually put another one in here and be totally fine, and maybe even that's preferable. But there's some things you want to make sure you get rid of. Now, on the bottom of this shape, we have a line right here that we don't need. No one's ever going to see this. So to bring down my polygon count, I'm going to go to Edge our trusted edge tool, go over here, and I'm going to go down to the menu, and I'm actually going to find the remove tool in the edit edges, and just remove it. We now have 90 polygons, and we actually have a full shape. If we go to polygon, we select the whole bottom, as opposed to just those two separate things. So we brought down one polygon, and we can do a lot more if we so desire. But when you start doing that, a lot of weird things start happening, especially in the texture will export, but we won't get into that because we can also get rid of some of these over here. Like this edge, we can pretty much get rid of. Same way we did the other one. Spin it around, get rid of that other edge. Unneeded, just confusing. Let's see, we can get rid of these edges in here on the roof, the chimney. Get rid of that. Move it around and get rid of this one. Now, before you start removing tons of edges, and I should have suggested this immediately, but you probably want to save a different version of your uh, house or whatever you're modeling. Because once you start taking away these edges and polygons, it's going to be a lot harder to edit things. So again, just save a copy of this. I'll go ahead and do it now. File, save copy as. And I have this called Spooky Scary Complete because, again, this is supposedly a haunted house. Well, I'm going to name mine Spooky Scary Complete underscore uh, streamlined just so I know that I've thought about polygon economy so I've got the chimney pretty much taken care of what else can I get rid of oh let's go to the porch right here this right here unneeded remove it this over here unneeded and removed now we can probably get rid of a whole lot more actually on the porch itself, but we're not going to do that because you'll see once you start modeling a lot of this stuff and then texturing it that sometimes you need those lines there and extra polygons and sometimes you don't. It's really something you'll have to actually 
uh, mess with and experience by doing it than something I can just show you. But we've gotten something that was 91 polygons down to 82 polygons, which is a pretty awesome feat. Now let's get this thing ready for Photoshop. Now we're actually going to navigate away from the edit polygon um, modifier list. And we're going to go back to the modifier list and actually go down to something else, which is unwrap UVW. Now you can't see this directly, so I'm going to bring this down a little bit so you'll be able to see it when I bring down the menu. Look for this. Unwrap UVW. Easy enough. I'm going to bring this back up so we can see everything in max. I'm going to hit the plus arrow on here and go to face. I'm going to hit control A to select everything. Now I can see it's selecting everything because everything is red. Now the reason it's doing this is because of the function keys. If I hit F2, everything is still selected, but the red goes away. I prefer to hit, have F2 activated so that everything is red when it's selected. Just so, also for other shortcuts, notice how everything's outlined in white. Yeah, that's because you have to have F4 uh, hit for, or pressed for that. When you hit F4 again, everything disappears. I'd like to have that little framework there. And if you hit F3, all the walls disappear and you have a skeletal view. Uh, these are just cool things to know, and it actually helps a lot. But now that's all the way, again, go to Unwrap UVW Map, go to Face, and then hit Control A so everything is selected. All right, now that you've done that, go down to where it says Parameters, and then hit Edit. And you're going to bring up this Edit UV Map panel menu. Everything looks crazy nuts. Don't worry about that. Go over to Mapping, and then go down to Flatten Mapping, and click that. Now the preset should be fine pretty much for everything that you'll need. You might want to tweak them for more advanced objects, but this is fine. Hit OK, and wow. We start seeing a lot of things that look like edges, actually, inside of Max. This looks like the side of the house with the, uh, the chimney on the top. This looks like the roof. This looks like the front of the house. That's because it is. This is every surface on the f outside of that house we just made. All right, now how do I get this into Photoshop? I'm going to go up to Tools, and I'm going to go to Render... UVW template. We get this thing within height, aspect ratios, fill. When you go to go to mode and make sure you hit solid. Now we're also going to show overlapping. I'll explain that in just a second. But go to render UV template and it actually renders everything for you. Now this is the image we'll take into Photoshop and we'll actually manipulate and bring back into Max and put on this object. Now I told you about overlapping and make sure that's selected. In most cases with these houses, because they're not overly complicated, or shapes like this, overlapping is something you won't have to worry about. But see this red here? This is where, uh, this is kind of hard to explain, and I won't get too in-depth to it. But this is where there's certain overlapping in the actual image itself. Maybe we deleted too many uh, polygons when we were deleting edges so we could bring that count down. Um, we probably wouldn't be seeing this if we hadn't tried to bring those polygons down. And again, it's... It's kind of a trade-off. You kind of have to judge it, and sometimes it won't make any difference at all. But just know that if you have any overlapping, when you bring this texture back into Max from Photoshop, you'll be, able, you'll be able to tell if it makes a difference because when you actually render it and see it on there, it's going to have, it could have a, a, just like a black space. Again, it's kind of hit or miss. There's no way to really judge or gauge how this is going to react until you actually bring it into Photoshop and then bring it back into Max. But just keep that in mind. So what I do now is I'm going to go to this little disk up here and hit save. It's going to ask me what I want to save it as. And I'm going to save it just in the folder that I have everything else in, Spooky Scary. I'm going to have the format be JPEG. Now, it can be anything you want, but I just prefer working with JPEGs. And it's something that can move between Photoshop and that other image software that we talked about that's free called GIMP, which my boss loves, but that's an aside. And pretty much any image software, JPEGs are standard. So I'm going to name this actually... Spooky, scary, UVW, temp. So I know that this was the original one that I export. I'm going to hit save. Make sure the quality is at best, large, and smooth. I mean, pretty much these defaults are standard and great. So hit OK. And you've got yourself a rendered UV map. What we're going to do now is go to the next tutorial where I'll actually show you some tips and tricks about texturing and then a tutorial after that we'll go back into Max with a texture into here and we'll be able to see the finished product of the house. This has been Alex, care of Mike Lively in the Structural Design 
and distance learning team at Northern Kentucky University. I cannot wait to show you stuff inside of Photoshop. It's going to be so fun, but I'll see you then.